Hello students, my name is Irina Glavnitska and I'm a senior lecturer of jurisprudence at the Belarusian National Technical University. And today we speak about political science. Political science is an academic discipline studied by students all over the world. And also it is uh, studied at postgraduate level of education. But why shall we study political science? What is the reason to do it? Uh, the importance of political science lies in the fact that all of us live within political systems and we are affected by the changes in the global political economy. So, political science educates people. It expands their knowledge about political systems, political behavior, political processes and political activities about people's constitutional rights and obligations. And of course, political science motivates and encourages people to, to participate in political activities. So, at least we have three reasons to learn and to study political science. Let's do it right now. So, let's start with our presentation, political science. Today we have a lecture and we shall discuss the main topics of political science. Let's start. Uh, the, first, uh, the first question is, what is political science? Uh, political science is a social science which deals with the theory and practice of politics and the analysis of political systems and political behavior. Political science is a study of politics. Uh, the Greek thinker Aristotle defined uh, political science as the study of the state. So, you can see that the main key in political science is Politics. Political science studies politics. What are political science objects? Let's see. Political science objects are politics, political power, political authority, political behavior, political institutions like state, government, political parties, and so on, and political systems. Now let's discuss political science topics. Political science topics are political science as a curriculum or like a political science as a, an academic discipline, then politics, political power, history of political ideas or history of political thought, uh, political institutions like government, state, political parties, social movements, political systems, political processes, and international relationships. Then we shall uh, start with the beginning of academical political science. Some facts from the history of political science. The beginning of academical political science connected with the opening in 18th and 15th 57 by the American professor Francis Lieber of the Department of Political Theory and History in Columbia University. International Colloquium on Political Science was held in Paris in 1938, which adopted a document that defined the content of political science and its main problems. So, you can see that some kind of happy birthday of political science of political science is in 1948 on International Colloquium. Thus, political science was constituted as an independent science and academic discipline. In the same year, the teaching of political science was recommended as a compulsory academic discipline. Since 1939, the International Political Science Association has been operating which holds international congresses every three years. So, she's some kind of happy birthday of political science, like a SR academic discipline in 1949. Then we shall go to the political science methods. You know that every science has its methods. So, as political science also has its own methods. Let's see. So, the first method is institutional method. What does it mean? Here, the accent is put on the analysis of political institutes. For example, when we analyze 
political institutes like government, like state, like political parties, we can use institutional method. The second method is sociological method. It allows to reveal the social nature of politics. You know that political science, this is a social science. That's why during studying political science, you can also use sociological method. The third method is comparative method. It provides a comparison of various political phenomena. We, you can use this method uh, while comparison different events which happened in the past with events that happen in the future and that happen now in present. And final, finally, legal method. Um, you can use this method while studying the constitutional principles and legal codes. Sometimes uh, political science deals with constitution, it deals with some legal documents, and while studying them, we can use a legal method. Then we shall proceed to the next question, to the following question, and this is political science and other branches of learning. You see that political science is not isolated academic discipline. It is not isolated course. And political science is related to other uh, branches of learning. They are history, geography, economics, jurisprudence, philosophy, sociology, and psychology. Let's uh, have a brief view of all of them. So, uh, political science and history. What is the connection? Political science studies the political events in the past. You know that we have a special chapter, a special unit, uh, a special part in the political science. And we call it history of political ideas. So, uh, uh, political science is connected with history. Then, political science and sociology. Both branches study human behavior in social groups. Whereas sociology studies the whole society, political science is connected with the political systems in the society. And you should remember also that political science is a social science. That's why, of course, it is related to sociology. The next is political science and psychology. A political science is connected with psychology and they both study the behavior of people. And political science studies political behavior, behavior of political subjects. Uh, the next is political science and economics. Economics is guided by politics and economics always takes the help of political science for securing right economic policies. You see that uh, politics influences economics as well as economics influences politics. And finally, political science and jurisprudence. Political science deals with constitution, it deals with some legal aspects of political processes, and so on. We uh, see the connection between the political science and jurisprudence, for example, while studying electoral process, while studying constitution, or some another legal document. Now, Let's proceed to the second part of the political science, second object of political science, the history of political thought. This is the historical part of political science program. 
The first is the Code of Hammurabi. The Code of Hammurabi was one of the earliest and most complete written legal codes by the Babylonian king Hammurabi, who ruled in the past. Established standards for commercial inter interactions and set fines and punishment. So this code con 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 uh, contained commercial interactions, it regulated commercial interactions and set fines and punishments. The code includes many harsh punishments, sometimes demanded the removal of the guilty party's tongue, hands, breasts, eye or ear. So, you see that punishments were quite cruel. But at the same time, the code is also one of the earliest examples of an accused person being considered innocent until proven guilty. So, the Code of Hammurabi, this is a good example of the most complete written legal codes in the history. The next is Plato. Now speak about some, we discuss and speak about uh, some Greek philosophers and their political thoughts, their political ideas. Plato was a Greek philosopher. He is the author of the works, the state, laws, in which he considers various forms of government. Plato divided governments into two forms. They are incorrect forms and right or correct forms of the government. According to the Plato, incorrect forms are democracy, power of ambitious people, oligarchy, democracy, tyranny and monarchy. And the right form or correct forms should be based on fair laws and according to Plato, the goal of the state is to ensure a fair hostel. According to the to Plato, the state should express the interests of the whole society and not of any social group. Then we speak about Aristotle. Aristotle also was a Greek philosopher. Aristotle is a student of Plato. He expressed his political views in the work politics he considers the state as the result of the natural development of a person, family or village. For man, the state is a great good. He distinguished between correct and incorrect forms of government, and the correct forms include monarchy, poverty, and the... Mm. Mm. Then we speak about Aristotle. Aristotle is a Greek philosopher too. Aristotle is a student of Plato and he expressed his political views in the work politics. Aristotle considers the state as the result of the natural development of a person, family or village. According to Aristotle, for man, the state is the greatest good. Aristotle distinguishes between cor correct and incorrect forms of government. According to Aristotle, the correct forms include monarchy, polity, and the wrong one ones include tyranny, oligarchy, and democracy. Aristotle was an opponent of the oligarchs. Nicola Machiavelli. Nicola Machiavelli is a talent thinker founder of modern political science. He finally freed political science from a religious and ethical form, believed that political thought should serve the solution of practical and real problems. The state is not God's business, but the work of man, told Nicola Machiavelli. The political state of society is characterized by certain relationships between people. The next one is Charles Louis de Montesquieu. Charles Louis de Montesquieu was the representative of France. 
He is the founder of a geographical direction in sociology. He argued that the climate, soil, and the size of the territory determine the moral character of the people and the form of government. Charles Louis de Montesquieu put forward the theory of separation of powers into legislative, executive, and judicial, which is the designed to justify the principle of legality, to ensure freedom and make law the regulator of relations between the state and the citizen. And now we uh, speak about uh, one Belarusian uh, thinker, political thinker, Francis Karina. Francis Karina was a Belarusian pioneer printer, philosopher, humanist, writer, and public figure. He believed that obedience to the law is a norm. According to Francis, Francis Karina, when developing laws, it is necessary to be guided by both natural law and local traditions. At the same time, justice and equality of fall before the law must be observed. He examined the relationships between politics and morality, proceeding from Christian ideas, noted the natural origin of power, political institutions, and law. Okay, and now we shall proceed to the following topic, and it is politics and political power, or politics and political authority. The term politics was introduced by Aristotle, also you know that he was a Greek philosopher. In his book Politics, he defined it as the art of governing the state. And you can see here two pictures. According to Winston Churchill, politics is not a game, but a serious business. And Albert Einstein said that politics is more difficult than physics. And here uh, we can, can see some more definitions of politics. Uh, politics is a political actions, practices or policies. Politics is participation in the affairs of the state. Uh, politics is specialized activity of the state to protect the fundamental rights to life, freedom, property. Property is a set of actions aimed at power, its retention and use. And finally, politics like a struggle for power. So what is political power? Or what is political authority? This is also a key question, a key option in the political science. Political power, this is the ability of one person or group of persons to control the behavior and actions of citizens and society based on national goals. The main features of political power are the first, a, a clear mechanism for implementing decisions of political power and practice. Then, principle of separation of powers. You know that according to this principle, for example, according to the Belarusian constitution, there are three uh, branches of power. They are legislative, executive, and judicial. Legality, it means the legal basis of authority, and legitimacy, public support for power. What are political power subjects? Political power subjects are primary and secondary. So there are two kinds, two types of political power subjects. Primary subjects are large social groups with their own interests. And secondary subjects are government bodies, political parties and organizations and political leaders. What 
are political power sources. You know that politics is based on some resources. Political power resources are also divided into some groups. They are economic resources, informational resources, cohesive resources, social, demographic, cultural and human. And now let's speak about political power sources, economic resources. They are material values necessary for social and personal production. Social resources. This is the ability to change social status and place in the social structure of society. Then cultural and informational resources. Knowledge and information at the end of the 20th century is becoming the most important resource of power. Cursive resources. They are army, police, and some other resources. Demographic resources. This is humans. They are humans itself. You know that people, people themselves, are also resources. Then human resources. They are beliefs, interests of people, their feelings and emotions. Then we start discussing the first topic in political power in political science. This is political institutions. Uh, there are three main types of political institutions. They are state or government, social movements, and political pa parties. All of them are subjects of politics. All of them are subjects of political processes and political systems. Uh, general features of the state are monopoly on the legal use of force, sovereignty, lawmaking, territory, the right to collect taxes and print money, state symbols, publicity of power. The functions of the state are carried out by a complex of special bodies and institutions. They are representative bodies like parliament. For example, in Republic of Belarus, parliament is a national assembly. Then executive and administrative bodies like government, prime minister, president. Then supervisory authorities, law enforcement agencies, judicial system, state security bodies and military establishment. For example, in the Republic of Belarus, judicial system is represented by constitutional court, common courts and economic courts. And there are different types of government and different types of political systems. According to the question, who rules, there are four answers. If one rules, this is monarchy or dictatorship. If none rules, this is anarchy. If few rules, rule, this is oligarchy. If all rule, this is democracy. And there are two types of democracy. They are direct democracy and representative democracy. But uh, we have one more classification of governments and this classification is based on the question how the power is distributed and according to this question there can be three answers. The first type of government is unitary government, government which holds all authority. The second is federal government, when local and federal government share power. The third is confederal government, when local governments hold most power but give central government specific power. And here you can see some examples of these governments like, for example, the example of unitary 
governments are Republic of Belarus, United Kingdom, France, Poland, and so on. The examples of federal governments are Russian Federation government, United States of America government, and the examples of confederal governments. This can be like Confederate States of America in the past, or like European Union in the present. Then we discuss different forms of government. There are two main forms of governments in political science. They are monarchy and republic. Monarchy governments and republic governments. And there are two types of monarchy and there are three types of republic. Constitutional monarchy means limiting the powers of the head of state by a representative body. The examples of constitutional monarchy are Great Britain monarchy, Denmark monarchy, Norway, Sweden, Spain, Japan monarchies. In absolute monarchy, the absolute power of the head of state and the examples of absolute monarchy are Oman, Saudi Arabia and so on. Then Republic, Republic governments. The first type of republic governments is parliamentary republic. Parliamentary republic, this is the republic where the government is formed by the party with the majority of the seats in the parliament and is accountable to parliament. The examples of parliamentary republic are Germany, Italy, Hungary, Ireland, India, Latvia and so on. The next type is presidential republic. In presidential republic, the president is elected through popular elections and doesn't depend on a vote on confidence in parliament. He is the head of state and chief executive. The examples of presidential republic are the USA Republic, Mexico, Brazil, Nigeria republics, and so on. The third type of government, republic governments, are mixed republics. The example of mixed republics are Bulgaria, Lithuania, Portugal, Russia, Belarus, Romania, Ukraine, Finland, and so on. It combines elements of the presidential and parliamentary republics. Then we speak about lawful states. The most essential features of lawful state. A lawful state, with this is a state that governed by law. And you can see here on this slide a list of characteristics of lawful state. They are separation of powers. Again, we, you know that there are three branches of powers in Belarus. They are executive branch represented by the government, then legislative branch which is represented by the parliament and the judicial branch, which is represented by the Kurds. Then equality of law for all, guarantee of personal freedom, the rule of law, mutual responsibility of the state and the individual, legal equality, citizens about by the right of responsibility before the world community. So, this is the main features of lawful state, state governed by law. Then we discuss what is political party. Political party, this is the subject of politics and an example of political institutions. Political party is a political association of citizens who adhere to the same ideology and are focused on the conquest and exercise of political power. The first political parties originated in ancient Greece. Political parties perform a number of, of functions. They are representation of interests. Political parties ident identify the interests of citizens. Citizens association. Parties are able to rally people with similar interests, intentions and goals around them. 
than electoral function. The activity of parties for their participations in elections. Then the function of political education of citizens, selection and formation of political leaders, the function of exercising power, and establishing contacts with the masses. Political party system. Political party system. You can see it on the screen and there are three types of political party systems. They are the one-party system, the two-party system and a multi-party system. The one-party system is represented by a state with one dominant and monopolar ruling party. The two-party system is a system where only two parties wage a real party in the elections and one of them secures the majority of the electorate and consequently parliamentary seat. And the, you can see that the, the examples of two-party systems can be USA two-party system or Great Britain two-party system. And the third is a multi-party system. A multi-party system is understood as a system in which more than two parties have enough organization to influence the functioning of government institutions. Among the varieties of multi-party system, there are three, four, five party and multi-party system. Then we speak about social movements. Social movements also are subjects of politics and are types of political institutions. So what are social movements? Social mov movements are non-governmental, non-state institutions that are created to solve social problems and implement public interests. The functions of social movements are protecting interests and their representation, united citizens, providing feedback between citizens and the authorities. Then we speak about types of social movements. Depending on the goals pursued by the movements, they are anti-war social movements, human rights social movements, social movements for environmental protection, and so on. Then, taking into account the scale of the movement, they can be local, regional, national, international or global movements. Then, based on the characteristics of gender and age groups, they can be youth, children or students' movements. Based on a social basis, they can be workers, small owners movements and so on. Based on economic interest, they can be trade social movements, cooperative social movements, business unions, social movements, and so on. And finally, based on a professional basis, they can be the movements of doctors, lawyers, teachers, scientists, writers, and so on. So, you can see there are a lot of different types of social movements. Then we discuss political culture as a part of political system. What is political culture? Political culture is a set of political knowledge, value orientations and behavioral models through which the subject interacts with the state and enters into political reality. Political culture reflects the degree of civilization of society and the individual, the ability to be guided by certain rules of political action and behavior. Political culture has a number of levels. They are worldview level, civil level and political level. At the worldview level, a person builds ideas about politics and his individual picture of the worldview. At the civil level, a person assesses his own capabilities to protect his rights and interests, develops a new level of understanding of his political status. And finally, at the political level, a 
A person develops an attitude towards specific forms of the political regimes of government, formulates worldview principles. Then we shall discuss different types of political culture. You know that there are three main types of political culture. They are patriarchal type, subject type, and activist type of political culture. Patriarchal type of political culture, this is the type of political culture where citizens have no interest in politics, they are only interested in local problems, a low level of activity and participation in public life. There is no political identification of citizens. The second type is subject type of political culture. Citizens have only general ideas about politics, but do, but do not seek to participate in it, perceive the state, power and politics as a given superiority in relation to their private life, tend to expand punishment from the authorities for disobedience or rewards for obedience and discipline. And the third type of political culture is activist type. Citizens are interested in politics and actively participating in political life, capable of influencing the authorities in order to satisfy their own interests. And now you can see here the political culture structure or political culture elements. So, political culture structure contains cognitive, moral, behavioral and value relationships types or elements. What is cognitive element of political culture? It means political knowledge, political education, ways of political thinking. Then moral element of political culture. It means political feelings, traditions, political values, political ideas, ideals and beliefs. The third element of political culture is behavioral element. It means political attitudes, types, forms, styles, patterns of social and political activity, and political behavior. And finally, uh, value relationships or element. It contains general cultural orientations, attitude to power and political phenomena and processes. Then we proceed to the following topic, topic number six, political processes. What is political process? Political process, this is a set of actions of political subjects to realize their interests and goals, leading to development, stabilization of society, to political change in the system of society. And the examples of political process are electoral process, revolution or reform. The subjects of political processes are classes, ethnic groups, groups, individuals, electorate, state, party, trade unions, universities, schools, government, presidents, and so on. The content of an individual political process is based on the characteristics of the political system and the political regime under consideration. And here you can see the structure and dynamics of the political process. You can see, you see that political process is a dynamic process. So the first step of political process is distribution and redistribution of power sources. The second is 
political mobilization of citizens making political decisions. The third is implementation and development of new political decisions. The fourth is representation of political interests by institutions making political decisions. And finally, we have formation, promotion of political interests of individuals, com communities, organizations, movements and citizens. But also you should remember that every political process is unique and every political process has its own structure and has its own features. And now we speak about elections. Elections as a type of political process. Elections in society perform the following functions. The first function is creative function. It means that through elections representative bodies are created. The second function is expression of the will of voters. It means the composition of parliament reflects political preferences of people. The next is le legitimation of power. It means as a result of elections parliaments become and are recognized as legitimate. Then the function of control. It means that periodic elections allow voters to control the elect and, if necessary, can deny them confidence and elect others. By the way, the right to vote can be active or passive. Active means that the citizens can elect. It means I choose. And passive assumes that the citizen can be elected himself, can take a seat in parliament or any other representative body. It means I'm elected. And now here you can see elections and electoral systems. We speak about two types of electoral systems. They are the majority system and the proportional electoral system. The majority system is based on the principle of majority. The candidate who receives the majority of votes is considered elected. And the examples of majority systems are the USA, France, Belarus. And there are two types of it, absolute majority system and relative majority system. Next is the proportional electoral system. The proportional electoral system gives voters the right to choose party lists and is based on the principle of proportionality between the votes received and the seats won, which are distributed among parties in accordance with the number of votes cast for them. And the examples of such proportional electoral systems are Spain, Greece, Portugal, Israel, and so on. And finally, we go to the topic international relationships. The main subject of international political relations is the state, the government, the state. And I should say that also other subjects of politics also take part and participate in international relationships. The main principles of international political relations are recognition of the sovereign equality of states, of governments, non-use of force in interstate relations, peaceful settlement of disputes, respect for human rights and freedoms, development of cooperation between states. And you know that, by the way, that every, uh, you know that every, uh, every government, every state has its foreign policy. And foreign policy is a part of state policy. Foreign policy is the activity of the state in the international arena to pursue its national, national interest. So the main goal of foreign policy of every country, of every state, is to pursue its national interests. And uh, finally, we go to the international organizations. 
Here you can see the list of international organizations, the most famous, uh, the most uh, powerful international organizations. They are United Nations, European Union, League of Arab States, Organization of American States, International Monetary Fund, Association of Southwest North Atlantic Bloc Nations, Organization for Security and Cooperation and Europe, and so on. This is not the final, this is not the end. So you can uh, find different kinds of international organizations. And now we speak about the global problems. What are the global problems? The global problems is a complex of political, economic, social, environmental problems of a worldwide nature, on the solution of which the fate of human civilization depends. These problems can be roughly divided into three main groups. They are socio-economic problems, environmental problems and political problems. Social economic problems are connected with overcoming economic backwardness, eliminating hunger and poverty, gradually reducing negative trends in the spiritual development of countries and peoples, prevention of crime, optimization of the demographic situation, the fight against dangerous diseases, improving the level and quality of life of people. Then environmental problems. Envir environmental problems are related to rational use of natural resources, search for ways to resolve energy, raw materials and food crisis, environmental protection, ensuring the environmental safety of production, prevention of harmful effects on the nature of military activities. And finally, political global problems, they are connected with peaceful resolution of interstate and regional conflicts, the fight against international terrorism, termination of the arms race, establishment of a new world order, strengthening of the international security system, strengthening guarantees for the realization of human rights and freedoms, approval of the principles of the rule of law and civil society on the planet. And here are some land resources. Uh, land resources here, they are free of charge and um, they are internet resources, internet open resources, and you can use it while studying political science. Okay, so that's all. Thank you for attention. And I hope that this lecture was interesting and useful for you. I hope that you have got a lot of useful information for you. And good luck!